Our guest in this segment is Nate Harmon. He's running for sheriff of Berkeley County, formerly, of course, the sheriff. You know Nate's story by now. You'd have to be living under a rock where I just moved here a day ago and never uh, read a newspaper or listened to the show to not. Nate, welcome back to the program. Hi. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, you are, um, after releasing uh, a statement that uh, you wouldn't run, you changed your mind, a fairly quick turnaround, too, uh, that you then had decided to run. Take me through that process that uh, maybe over 24 hours or so, which you weren't going to run, and then you were. Well, it's, it, it's all about the family and then the people. So um, I was adamant uh, that uh, my wife uh, had been through enough, and we, we were talking. And on the front end of it, it was uh, it's more like, um, do I want to really – uh, put her through that. It was more about her than it was me. Um, at the same time, though, uh, I was very blessed at the amount of outreach from the people and uh, messages, phone calls, and conversations that we've had. Um, I looked at my wife literally 25 minutes uh, before the closing of the uh, voters registration office, uh, and I asked her one more time. Uh, do you want me to do this? And she looks at me because it was a very sentimental uh, day for us because of the messages that we received that particular day from particular people. And um, she said, go do it. And um, as long as she's by my side and supporting me uh, in this decision, because uh, I wasn't going to do it without her. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what uh, primarily made me change my mind. Are you concerned at all, Nate, that this might be too soon, that it might have been better to let the dust settle for a while? No, not at all. Um, I think if you look at the situation, uh, and I'm not going to rehash the whole thing, uh, we're still looking at two separate things in terms of where I applied uh, what I felt to be actions of a father. Um, and uh, I think uh, a lot of people say you got to separate – uh, your, your, you being a sheriff to you being a father. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I, I think that uh, one has to have empathy from m multiple aspects when you're dealing with uh, m uh, multiple situations that we are exposed to. Um, and you have to have empathy as a father. You have to have empathy as someone who has struggled. You have to have empathy for someone, whether that struggles financially or a grievance during a, a family loss. Um, there's a lot of characteristics and traits that come along with just being human. Um, you know, and, um, uh, one person said to me at one point, and I had it on my desk for the longest time. It said, uh, be as good a person as you can be, but don't waste time proving it. And what, and I take that to heart because it's, uh, that's all I've ever tried to do. Um, you know, could I have handled things uh, slightly differently? Sure. Uh, and, and I recognize that, but, uh, I will never lose my empathy, uh, as a, in the trench white collar person who has went through uh struggles and i think at the end when families look at this situation and make their decision whether to vote for me or not um uh, the message i want to relay is the fact that i'm not immune from situations in life uh i've had struggles my families have have struggles i'm not on a pedestal i don't want people to put me on a pedestal i put my pants on the same way everybody else does and i like to think that those same struggles is what's made me so successful in the three years that i was in office and that's the other side of what i hope people look at is promises made promises kept and there is literally nothing i said during my campaign previously that i didn't accomplish in as little as three years. Matter of fact, the uh, comment I will always hold on to, Doug Copenhaver and others have uh, approached me, Dan Doulier and uh, others in the community have said uh, uh, with a pat on the back, man, what I thought would take you four years, you did in one. And, and that will always stay with me. And, uh, you know, um, that's the type of person I am. I, I work for the paycheck. I work for every red cent. And uh, I work for the people. And they see that. You lost the trust of some of the voters in Berkeley County. What the number of is, I don't know. And ultimately, I guess we'll find out May 14th. How do you propose to get or earn some of that back between now and May 14th? Well, I think uh, uh, 
the strategy that uh, for my campaign is, is going to be a lot more personable. Um, I believe, Bill, you'd mentioned it early at, at some point, uh, we've gotten away from town halls. Um, that will be what my campaign uh, solely relies on. Facebook's great, but we all know social media. People from five states away can throw in their input, and they have. Uh, 99% of anything negative on uh, Facebook has come from folks that don't live here. So uh, my campaign is going to be more personable. I enjoyed, I think the best part of my job was that I got out there and I was able to talk to people one-on-one, face-to-face. If you want to have coffee with me, great. If you want to come to the office, great. Um, if you want me to meet you at your house, awesome, I'll do that. Uh, and I was on the ground for all of this. I just didn't delegate it and send other people. Uh, I enjoy being interactive with the public. And all I ask is folks that don't know me, get to know me and and sit down with me. Uh, Davy Jones is a perfect example. Um, Davy was an opponent of uh, of mine in the last campaign. He's going to be again. I've already talked with him. He's a a phenomenal person, very intelligent um, and and very like-minded. Um, and once he sat down with me and he had a discussion with me, all the hoopla that uh, my adversaries were, were trying to spew out there last time, um, you know, he had come to a, a realization just through that discussion on his own accord without any, any influence from me. He just had an in-person conversation with me. So that's what I want to have with the public, and uh, that's what I want them to judge me on. Bill? Uh, Good morning, Nate. Good morning. Uh, I think everybody would recognize your first two years in office was really golden years. Uh, You were given a lot of credit for what your uh, your communication skills, you're being very open. Then things started changing. Uh, Things changed with with your daughter's accident. Uh, And some of the, you made the point, the empathy with your daughter, nobody is questioning that. What they are questioning are other things. They're questioning your lack of transparency for the next several, several weeks after the accident and how in certain areas you're still resisting being open. They're also questioning your relationship with uh, uh, steering business toward uh, Summit Point uh, as as sheriff. They're questioning your involvement with uh, the uh, civil service board uh, d- uh, having favorable treatment of bypassing uh, civil service board. So these things are independent of uh, that that incident with your daughter. Uh, you, you may have not have burned bridges, but you've singed bridges. You've singed bridges with uh, some of the voters that uh, Rob alluded to. You also singed bridges with uh, both the uh, uh, prosecuting attorney uh, and the um, uh, and the county commission. How you go? How will you go back to to build up the good, very good relationship you had for uh, the first two years? Well, uh, Bill, I always appreciate your questions. They're they're rather to the point, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, and and I'd have to disagree with you wholeheartedly. I don't okay. think that these are independent uh, uh, opinions as much as they are not involved opinions. If you were to involve yourself with my relationship with Summit Point, and I, I ask anybody to do a FOIA, and that's how comfortable I am with that. Uh, the relationship was completely legitimate. I campaigned on the fact that I would train there because – Folks got to, our deputies got to go home and see their families at night. So mm-hmm. if you're, if anybody is saying that there's a, anything questionable about anything within the petition that was filed, I would say you're just simply not paying attention because uh, if I said it w- at once, I di- if I didn't say it 10 times, I didn't say it once, the ethics commission approved all of that. So um, did they give a, uh, well, I know what you're going to say. Did they give a written thing? Well, I may give, until they give a written, it's not official. Uh, of, of course. Yeah. In September, I called the Ethics Commission. I got the call logs for it. I'm pretty sure the attorneys in the Ethics Commission would not lie that they had those conversations. And I would hope to say that the, uh, that the uh, conversations uh, in a state office like that are recorded. So please FOIA, whatever you want to FOIA. But that conversation did happen, and I did clear that. So um, it... If people still have opinions out there, then they're they're ill informed and they're not digging deep enough. And I'd like to say that that's a problem with our elections nowadays. People go in there and they 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 check the R box or they check the D box or whatever box they they check. And I know 
People have admitted that they didn't have time to research, and they'd go in there and they without doing their research at all. Uh, you can do research on me and find out that I was heavily involved in the community before I ran for sheriff. You can check the research and, and, and see that I'm still involved. Even though I'm not in office, I just got done teaching in elementary school about uh, safety. And, and, you know, and I'm not beating my chest about that. I, I never charged for any of that. Um, all I have ever wanted to be was an individual at the table with the stakeholders to make our kids safer. Um, so I would say all of those of what you just said, I didn't, I don't feel I've singed bridges. Um, I, I feel that, uh, uh, internally I've documented some discrepancies very well that I plan on address that I was addressing at the time. Uh, it scorned a few people and those few people have friends and, uh, I, that's that's pretty much all I'll say about that because I've got some uh, uh, potential litigation going on uh, in the future with that. Nate, are you employed now by Summit Point? Are you employed by Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races? Neither. Neither of them. Correct. So do you have a job, um, a, a full-time job somewhere doing something right now? I'm, I'm focused uh, primarily on my private business, Pinnacle Training Solutions, where I offer consulting and training opportunities to businesses, places of worship, hospitals, and schools. I train in uh, firearms. I train in emergency preparedness. I also train in driving. Some people, some parents don't have the luxury of 55 hours to document on that log that DMV requires you to do. So I can help parents with their kids in terms of driving. Um, and I also do threat assessments and risk assessments on facilities and structures. Um, so I'm focused on that primarily right now. And you talked about um, two former commissioners, um, you know, giving you laudatory uh, comments when mm -hmm. you were in office, but clearly you resigned from office. Mm -hmm. You knew what was happening or you had a clue as to what was happening mm -hmm um how how things were going to go so you did resign mm -hmm. and the county commission did appoint someone else mm -hmm. um to the the sheriff's role but yet um after after conversing with your family with your wife you've decided you want to do that again what makes you the best person for the job um in uh coming up well, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've always considered myself uh, uh, neutral with everybody else. Your white collar person that puts their pants on the same way everybody else does. I think someone who hasn't went through the struggles, uh, and even even now, um, as a newly uh, a new person that's went through the judicial system, there's some problems. There's some problems. There's some weaponization of the judicial system that I don't care for. That fast tracks things. That's purposefully done to alter the outcome of, of uh, let's just say if things would have happened slightly differently, um, then I think uh, there would have been a, 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 well, a much greater different outcome uh, with it. And again, I'm, I can't get in the weeds on that, but uh, uh, the judicial system was weaponized against me. I felt victim. The whole process of that petition, and I'll walk you through this right quick because I know I don't have a lot of time and I want to get to what I plan on doing in the sheriff's office for the future. Um, when I walked in on that day for the petition, I got handed a 16 page document. I got to maybe page four and they were ready to vote. And uh, I said, hold on a second. I don't know what's going on here because it, essentially it was an ambush is what it was. Um, and I had the, uh, what I still consider the unethical uh, relationship of the Dugatis both in that room and uh, my attorney couldn't make it, so I had a witness with me. Um, they kicked me out of the room uh, while they had their private conversations. I got brought back in. They finally agreed to reconvene at 3.30. I did bring my attorney in at that time. Uh, my attorney called how inappropriate the situation was because there's privy information uh, that uh, was being utilized that I didn't even have discovery on, nor my attorney had discovery on. We didn't even see a drop of information that she was using. And, uh, and then they kicked us out of the room again for the next 35 to 40 minutes. So when you have a one-sided narrative and the commission gets bullied into making a decision, and I will just add this, um, 
and, and Bill, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, when you have an executive session and that executive session, when it's about an employee and that employee is in the room and that employee is the employee being affected, that employee has the right to request that that session become public. And that is in black and white, and I read that. But not for elected officials. It doesn't specify yeah, that. It, 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 okay. that. That provision is for elected officials. Well, it, regardless, I feel yeah. that my rights were violated, yeah. and the way that process was handled was completely a uh, 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 bullying, ambush type of situation. That whole process was, was skewed from the beginning. But, now, what I would love to have seen was the people. 10% of the voters' population, if someone wants to argue, well, that'd be way too expensive, well, why don't you take the 200 and some thousand dollars that you're paying your legal department that you don't have to, a created position, and apply it to those special elections because the prosecuting attorney for the county is the legal advisor for the commission. So, I, you know, as I, the argument is a mute point when it comes to expenses. Basically, you're saying the people's voice is too expensive. I want the people to decide. Now, I wanted the commission to wait till March. Wait till my hearing to find out the results of those hearings before they stepped and moved any further. And they had that ability to do that. This hurry up and rush thing uh, it w was completely inappropriate. And that's all I'll say about it. But my question earlier was, how are you going to build up these relationships again? And what I heard you just say is that you have some, you have a grievance toward uh, the other elected officials, uh, the county commission and the prosecuting attorney. And right now, I've not heard any sense at all that you're going to try to rebuild mm -hmm. those bridges. No, I don't. I didn't say I had a grievance towards the commission. What I said was the commission I felt was bullied. And uh, they made a decision that they felt was right. I have no ill will against them. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Eddie Gokenauer and Steve Catlett specifically, not taking anything away from anybody else, uh, those folks were the only ones to, to have a meaningful conversation with me, matter of fact. Joe Kisner's running for prosecuting attorney's office. He's, he's a man of reason. He's a man of common sense. Uh, when the prosecuting attorney, that out of my three years, only calls my office, or, or let's just say calls specifically to talk to me two times out of three years that's that's not a that's not even a working relationship that's not a that's a i don't want to have a relationship mentality so joe kisner and i have a mutual understanding that he's of like-minded uh, uh on some of these issues and he does have an opponent though uh, i think mr Stebbin. jason Stebbin. Jason Stebbin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i've talked yeah. to mr Stebbin. very good guy uh and i've uh, had conversations with him uh uh, conversations about uh, you know ch child abuse cases and that's one of the things uh, I think needs emphasized uh, moving forward uh, in my soon to come uh, office I want to implement uh, a, a child abuse task force that's comprised of uh, folks from my ace team and folks from criminal investigation division there was a brief that was made in uh, education committee I believe just yesterday where I saw a sergeant state trooper uh, who was uh, permanently assigned to CAC child abuse uh, cases uh, that she described uh, the fact that there has been double over double in terms of the tips towards child sexploitation and, and the state police admittedly as she admits uh, doesn't have the manpower to keep up with it uh, there needs to be uh, more uh, undercover uh, uh, operations that uh, uh, we can apply and then I believe the sheriff's office can help the state police with that um, of course the ACE team is created to help with uh, community complaints drug interdiction and stuff like that but they are also are a hybrid team in terms of augmenting criminal investigation division and it is my understanding that within the first seven and the public needs to know this that is my understanding within the first seven days after I left the ACE team was dissolved and you're talking about a team that actually had an increase of 333% in drug seizures and arrests within their first year. But that I was under 20 under seconds left here. Nate, uh, just a quick final word from you. Yeah, 20 uh, seconds. that's one thing. The other thing is safety sites, uh, four of them throughout the county. Uh, I had the luxury of seeing uh, IT put up a video box, and this is where you can safely exchange the custody of kids, marketplace, stuff like that. I want to address the homeless issue. I want to help the homeless program and work with the Reverend at the mission. And also, uh, 65 years and older, I want to work on tax reductions uh, for those folks, but work with legislation. Nate, thank you for coming in again.
Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. 9.57, final minute coming up on the program right after these.